All right, so here we are in Dynamics 365, just happened to be using a sample bit of information here inside of the Chrome browser. As you can see, by default, I have this sample uh, tenant set to load the sales dashboard by default. And you can see here, just to use this as an example, uh, these three items here at the top are lists. So we have an all activities lists, we have an open opportunities lists, and we have a my leads scored list. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see this is a three, uh, three column wide, two column uh, deep sort of grid. That's one of the view options we have. We can see here we have another list of active accounts. And here's some of the charting capabilities that we have. We have our open opportunities represented in a sales pipeline. Uh, everyone in sales loves the funnel representation of our uh, sales pipelines. And here we have another chart here uh, showing all opportunities sorted by top customers. Uh, so we can see a lot of them are blank, but we can see that Proswear Inc. is sort of our highest customer with a number of top opportunities and a sum of estimated revenue. So again, if you're a visual person that needs to see things at a glance as you go through your day, or you need to drill into certain uh, areas quite frequently, building a dashboard can be a useful first step in there. And now these are the out-of-the-box dashboards that are pre-built with customer engagement in the CRM side of Dynamics 365. We have an agreements main dashboard, we have a sales activity dashboard, we have a sales activity social dashboard, uh, which I think is probably the second most useful here. Uh, a few more charts here that we can bring in uh, as far as open opportunities, open leads, uh, opportunities that are top sort of, sort of ranked by size, closed opportunities in current that are top by customers, and then we have an activities list here at the bottom. So another example of one of the layout choices. Now, um, there's no data available here because this uh, particular demo user I'm using doesn't have a lot of information, but you can see how uh, you can lay different things out, set different column widths and set different heights, for example, and lay out your dashboard that way uh, it works for you. And lastly here, just to give you a taste of bringing in Power BI into Dynamics 365, if you create a dashboard in the Power BI desktop workspace, you can surface that dashboard here through sharing, uh, through Office 365 and through Dynamics 365. You can pick up those dashboards here in Dynamics 365. So you can see quite a lot uh, more visual, uh, a lot more appealing. And again, this is harnessing the, the power of Power BI uh, with some of the different ways you can represent data. Um, and this data can be pulled from Dynamics 365 databases, or it can be pulled from external databases like SQL Tables, Dynamics GP, if you want to bring in your customer balances, for example, uh, or tie in with your other accounting programs. So sky's the limit here, um, but we're not really going to cover the Power BI section beyond this. Uh, but rest assured, if you want to work with a Power BI partner like Profit, uh, the skies are the limits here for um, creating Power BI dashboards. Okay, from here we can go ahead and create a new dashboard. Uh, and that's as simple as clicking on the new icon here in the ribbon. And we're going to create a new Dynamics 365 dashboard. And that's going to pop us up a dialog window with some information here and some of the choices around layout and some of the different uh, items that we want to input into our dashboard. Okay, here we go. We've got the Choose Layout dialog now, and here's the variety of layouts that I had mentioned you can pick from. Uh, there's the three-column regular dashboard. We can have a three-column multi-focus dashboard, uh, four-column. Uh, this isn't too particularly useful because some of those lists will get quite uh, narrow. It's a little bit hard to see. We have a two-by-two. Two. Uh, we have a, a row with three and one large list on the bottom. For example, we have one big one with four off to the right-hand side, or we have this uh, sort of four-column interesting dashboard here with four smaller units across the top and two wider ones. For, for today's uh, example, let's just go ahead and pick the 2x2 two two grid. Uh, I find that's the most useful on uh, a variety of screen sizes, for example. So we'll go ahead and create that now, and we're going to move to the dialog where we can pick the different components in our dashboard. So you can see this pops up a Power Apps window. Uh, this is running behind the scenes. If you have never played uh, sort of behind the scenes in Dynamics 365 before, uh, a lot of power here that you do use in the Power Apps Designer. So you can see here's our 2x2 two two grid. Uh, we can go ahead and give our dashboard a name. 
and we can get really creative now with the elements that we want to land in each of our four sections. So you can see these small icons here. We have the ability to add our charts, our lists. We can insert the relationship assistant. Now that's a little bit of AI that will tell you if you have um, leads that are closing soon, opportunities that are closing soon, or activities related to something that are uh, closing soon or past due. Here we can go ahead and insert an iframe. We can add our web resources, or we can bring in a small Power BI tile into the dashboard. So with this blank canvas now, let's go ahead and start adding some elements into our dashboard. Up here on the top left, let's go ahead and start with a list. I'm just going to click the insert list icon here. And we'll see we have the add component dialog box that pops up. Now, two important things that we need to pick from. One will be the record type and one will be the view. So any entity that exists in Dynamics 365 uh, in the context of our CRM, for example, we can pull into uh, the dashboard here. So let's, for our example, let's go ahead and pull in contacts. And the view is always going to bring up your default view, but uh, again, these are all the system views that we have. Um, for this particular user, I have happened to have pinned the My Active Contacts view, so we'll go ahead and uh, just keep that as the default. We'll go ahead and click Add. And you can see now that the Contacts List element here is in the top left corner of our dashboard. It's not going to show any data. It won't do that until we save out and go back to the actual dashboard window. But for now, we have this space occupied by a list view of our contacts. Let's go ahead and do another list here. Uh, one that I like to use in particular is uh, a view of my tasks. Uh, you can sort of use this as a pseudo to-do list or if you have uh, tasks or appointments and so forth um, dedicated to you or assigned to you in Dynamics 365. Again, this is a good way of seeing, um, you know, visually start your day a few times throughout your day, what the tasks are that you have assigned in CRM. Okay, so that's going to be in our top right hand corner of our dashboard. Let's just scroll down a touch now. Uh, let's go ahead and do a chart. Now the next uh, bottom left section here, we'll go ahead and click the insert chart button. And we're just going to wait for this dialog box to pop through. And again, same deal, record type, view, and chart. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and do tasks again. And we'll go ahead and take the view of my tasks. And then we do have some options here as far as what kind of chart we want to show. Maybe we want to show some tasks um, sorted in the months that they're due. Uh, tasks by owner, tasks by priority and owner or test tasks by priority. So these system charts that are already built into the task entity. So let's go ahead and pick tasks by priority. You can see in this case, it does give us a sample preview of uh, what this chart's gonna look like. So quite interesting, we can see here visually, okay, we've got three high priority tasks and one low priority task um, may or may not be helpful for you as it relates to your tasks. But again, the sky is the limit here. Anything that can be sort of charted or quantified uh, you can bring in here uh, and make a visual representation on your Dynamics 365 dashboard. Okay, so the next element we're going to play with now is an iframe. Um, this one's a little bit trickier, and I want to let you know uh, if you are using iframes in your uh, Dynamics 365 dashboard, if you are running into trouble, uh, be sure to try a different browser. Sometimes Chrome or Edge don't like the iframe coding. Uh, whereas you may find success in Internet Explorer. And as well, a lot of modern websites now are actually blocking the use of iframes. So uh, if you do some searching on Google or Bing, you can find apps that will help you test if a particular website is uh, supporting iframes. For example, um, putting a Twitter feed uh, is a little bit trickier because Twitter doesn't support the iframe easily. But let's go ahead and I'll show you an example of a website I was able to get working uh, rather easily. So we'll go ahead and click the insert iframe icon. That's going to pull up a uh, more detailed um, dialog here. We have the component name. Um, again, if you get into more of the detailed, complicated JavaScripting program, you can call on web resources. And that's how you can get some of those um, stickier websites into the iframe components. But for what it's worth, I went to the Government of Canada's weather website, and I've got the uh, forecast here, the weekly forecast for Winnipeg. 
So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to paste that URL in here. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to leave everything else um, the way it is and the way it is uh, set up here. The only difference is we're going to check the enable for mobile box down here in the visibility section. So we'll go ahead and click OK on that. So again, we're not going to get a preview of our iframe, uh, but D365 is going to save everything uh, we've got here so far. So now we've got something in all four of the sections of our dashboard. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll go ahead and close out of this window, and we'll go back to Dynamics 365 in a web browser just to see what this dashboard looks like. Okay, here we are back in our dashboard. You can see that it is showing up here now in our list of dashboards available to us. We've got our four panels. In the top left, we've got My Active Contacts. In the top right, we have the task list, or sort of my pseudo to-do list that we've created here. Uh, down in the lower left, we have the My Tasks chart. We can see I have three high priority tasks and one low priority task. So sort of an interesting visual based on the same data that's up here. And then in the bottom right hand corner for the block, we do have our Government of Canada forecast. So this is kind of cool. Maybe you run a seasonal business and you do want to see the current weather conditions or the forecast that might impact your business having that in a dashboard in your CRM uh, in D365 could be helpful to you. So you can see it's just a plain old website and we can scroll through it here within the iframe section uh, in our dashboard. Now, one important thing to note here, as you do zoom in or zoom out, you may notice that uh, the um, reactive design of the unified interface here in Dynamics 365 does change some of the elements. So if we zoom out far enough, we do get that uh, two by two grid. If we zoom in, uh, D365 is, is doing its best to realign this for any screen size and it's actually gonna make us one column and four sort of uh, building blocks tall. So again, it's a little bit tricky. I know this is the layout that we picked, it was the two by two but check your zoom if you are having troubles with uh, the layout in particular. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up today, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom back in here just so you can see a little bit easier what I'm doing. Uh, a few more action buttons here on the top ribbon of our dashboard. We have a set as default button. So if you want the webinar dashboard to always show up when you click into the dashboard section here, you can go ahead and click that not too hard to do. If you want to clear that default or change it out, you can see here that the button has changed. And last but not least is the shared dashboard button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Let's say we want some other teammates in our organization to use this webinar dashboard that we've created. We can go ahead and add users or whole teams if we'd like to. So it's as easy as picking a few folks here. Let's say Alan, Alicia, and Ali all want to use my beautiful dashboard with the weather forecast. We can go ahead and check them off here, add them to the list. And now we can even go as far as changing their permissions. So we can give them permissions to write, delete, assign and share any of the records that they see uh, through the dashboard that I've come up with. So we'll go ahead and share that out and we get a progress bar. And uh, within a few seconds, those users will be able to uh, pin up and even set that d dashboard as their default as well. So there we have it. That is my quick look at building Dynamics 365 dashboards. Again, just to recap, uh, dashboards are a good central location for key information for yourself or for your team. You can add visual representations of key goals, metrics, uh, pretty much anything that is quantifiable from your entities in Dynamics 365. You can pair up your dashboards with Power BI uh, items if you want more capabilities or uh, more visually appealing uh, graphics, if you will. You can bring in external information and sort of create an information hub for your salespeople. And you can personalize your dashboards. You can keep them to yourself or you can share them out to a team.